we're talking about exponential growth. And I think the first thing we should take care to point out is that every exponential function of the form q of x equals a times b to the power of x can be rewritten as q of x equals a e to the power of r x and vice versa. So the way that this E is introduced may make it sound like it's something special, that you can use this form if you have this continuous exponential growth, but sometimes you don't, and you have to use this form, and none of that's true. You can write an exponential function like this, like this. There are two different ways of expressing the same concept. The question of how we'll perhaps address later. Let's just give a quick example. Say that we have q of x equals, and now I'm just selecting something at random, 1.17 times 0 0.962 to the power of t. It is my contention that q of x can be rewritten as 1.17 times e to the negative 0.0382. Four zero eight T. And at the moment, we don't have any way of seeing where this number comes from. We're just making the contention that this could be rewritten using exponential growth, if only we knew how. But the how is going to have to wait. For now, Let's just investigate this graphically. If these two functions 
are really the same, they ought to have the same graphs. So there's our original equation and we are claiming that this is equal to this. And our graph has vindicated us. These are exactly the same curve. So a times b to the power of t and a times e to the power of rt are two different ways of expressing the same thing. They're both exponential functions. Once we introduce logarithms, we may come back to this example and see where the numbers I used came from. Mm-hmm.